this footage is what's going to be shown oh, wow. like at my funeral if I should die in a mine. My name is Britt Eaton. You know, I have some rental property. I have some investments. I am in the vintage clothing business. When I'm not at home, I come out here and go explore old mines. Ooh, really gnarly smell coming out of there. I mean, this could be a dead body. I mean, honestly, people dump human bodies out here too. We're not that far from Vegas. They've called me in a fashion archeologist, denim collector. I started with the New York Times. They're the ones that called me Indiana Jeans. Come on, where's the jeans? I'd be willing to bet $50,000 that there's a $50,000 pair of jeans somewhere in a 10 mile radius of where we are right now. Finding it, good luck. Nice fucking rattlesnake, all right. You might get a rattlesnake, or you might get hit by a rock, or you might fall. There's things like deadly poisonous gases. All I know is, is that the second I believe I'm gonna die, that's when I'm gonna freaking die. And until then, I'm gonna stay freaking alive. All right. Yeah, we're in the middle of nowhere on the loneliest highway in America. So in the van here, I've got a pretty good setup. It's four wheel drive, it's diesel. I sleep up there. I've got ice cold beer in my fridge here 24 seven. So I had this thing kind of custom designed for an adventure killer mine find in here from the other day. As you can tell, it is a petrified coyote which I am gonna return into the mine today. I just brought it out for the sake of showing people. I've been called eccentric before, and it's not one of my favorite words, but you know, I guess it does fit the bill a little bit. If eccentric means somebody who doesn't wanna work in an office or work in a job or work in a city or have to listen to a boss, then I'll take eccentric all day long. Be a Huawei. What a place. I moved to Colorado in 1997. I started a vintage store and I would source stuff by traveling around to thrift stores for about half of my life. I think in like 1999, an old pair of Levi's were found in a mine and it kind of blew up and everybody knew about it, made like the New York Times or something. So I started thinking maybe that's where I need to go look for stuff. Oh, well, I'm loving this guy's roof rack on his car right now. I like your roof rack, man. That thing's sweet. What do you use the winch for? You go down in mines? Yeah. You ever find any old clothing or any cool artifacts? No. My name is Britt, by the way. Uh, hey, good man, Britt. Santos, you ever heard the band Sublime? No. Oh, they sing about a guy named Santos. Oh yeah? I think so, yeah. Hmm. Going out here and doing this is more of a side hustle for me. Like coming out here, mine exploring, I'm probably not gonna make a bunch of money, but there is a payoff if I get really lucky. Only this road in America. I don't really know where we're going right now. We're going to some mining that I found on the map that I've wanted to go for 25 years. And I'm excited because I've never been there. I always get much more excited about places I've never been than places I have been. Mainly because the places I have been have all proven to be giant disappointments. <laughs> and yet I'm an optimist anyway. Everything I find is a trophy of the hunt for me. Whoa, Jesus. Sorry, oh. All right, I'm getting all my gear going. And as you can see, I have probably over 100 pieces of gear here. My van was probably around $100,000. You know, my GoPro is probably, I don't know, 500 bucks. All my climbing equipment, probably 2,000 bucks. It's probably $500 round trip just for gas. Even with the van, I probably spend three nights at hotels. So what's that, 100 bucks a pop, 150 bucks a pop now? A lot of upfront costs on this deal. This kind of stuff, no, you're not making any money. However, if I did find something awesome, I'd probably keep it for my collection. Then I could rent it out. There was one time where I had a pair of jeans that I rented for $750 a month for five months. And then when I got it back, I sold it for 7,500 bucks. I've worked with all these big, you know, Abercrombie, Polo, you know, Levi's, The Gap. So one time a uh, new person told me, he said, oh, that's great that Ralph Lauren's doing a pair of jeans named after you, the Eaton Jeans. And I'm like, really? I think we're ready for an exploratory uh, program here. So allons-y, mes amis. I have got to tell you that I've been pretty lucky. I mean, call it skill, luck, you know, knowledge, whatever. Um, I've gotten some great leads from some people over the years that have helped me out. I've found some amazing places and I've gotten underground where I'm the first one there, or at least the first one looking for clothing in a hundred years. Snakes, snakes. This rattlesnake thing is no joke. Fuck, this is a killer mine, guys. Anybody watching this has to understand this is a 25 year process of learning. You can't just go into a mine and walk around, you're gonna get killed. And people watching right now might be thinking, oh, I know what might kill you, you might get a rattlesnake, or you might get hit by a rock, or you might fall. All true, but there's things like 
deadly poisonous gases. And you get in there and next thing you know, you're dead. These hills are littered with wannabe mine explorers who died all the way back from the 1800s to modern day. But they do fall in mines and there are rattlesnakes. I had to kill a rattlesnake two days ago to keep exploring. <laughs> Oh, that's fucking rattlesnake, all right. Oh, come on, you fucking dumbass. Sorry, bud. What do you see down there? Oh, an old piece of a can, but not much. I knew this wasn't gonna be that great just based on how many footprints I saw. Well, we've seen this one. Let's get the heck out of here. I'm not a big fan of sticking around. I'm experienced that I know what's a risk and what isn't a risk. So if I look at something, I can analyze it, and my risk calculator, you know, uh, algorithm inside me is honed, you know? People ask me, how do I um, sort of justify the risks that I take? And I have a family, my kids are older, and what kind of a role model would I be for my kids if I lived my life in a conservative way in order to be there for them? Then wouldn't they, in turn, then live their lives not to their fullest as well? To be honest with you, it's completely selfish. It's very selfish for me to go out there and risk my life doing this. Like, they worry more than children should have to worry about their father. And, uh, you know, I feel guilty about that. But at the same time, if you live your whole life for what other people want you to be, or you work in an office and you're miserable, most people sit around on Monday wishing it was Friday. Essentially, they're wishing for their fucking lives to be over. When I wake up in the morning, I'm stoked like a freaking fire every fucking day because I have an awesome life. So that's the person that I want to be for my children. I want them to look at me and say, you know, my dad's a freaking badass. You know, he kills rattlesnakes to get through mines to keep exploring. And I want them to live their lives like that. And if something happens to them on the way, well, my God, you know, better to burn out than fade a freaking away. Mine exploring is 99% of the time it's going around trying to find a place to get in. <laughs> and uh, most of the time you can't do it. And then when you do find a place to go in, it usually dead ends. It basically sucks, is what it does. A lot of activity, and yet nothing that looks really like a, some sort of portal or an add-in or anything, even a shaft. We thought we were going to some cooler place, but we ended up at the same stupid place. I don't see diddly dick up here, guys. Anybody see dick? Oh, cool, there's some town kind of stuff here. Ooh, really gnarly smell coming out of there. All right, well, this could be a dead body. I mean, honestly, people dump human bodies out here too. We're not that far from Vegas. So who wants to go first? You guys want to go first this time? Kind of nervous in this one because of that dead smell. That probably means something's alive eating that thing that's dead. Uh-oh. I mean, this thing goes down and I guess I gotta go down it, you know? I don't think you're gonna want to come down here, but... Ugh! Fuck, this sucks. Here we go, beer bottle. Peace. <clears throat> some old blasting paper from dynamite. When I'm doing a first ascent, sometimes I'm by myself, which is not smart, but I have this sort of running mantra that goes in my head. This is not the end of Braid Eaton. 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 Just over and over, this will not be the end of me. Because it is dangerous. I'm critically aware that I could get killed at any moment. I mean, I've had a lot of friends. Just in the last freaking four months, I've had like four friends die. Four good friends in the last four months. Oh. Oh. Shit. I need to find some treasures. Come on. Anywhere could be something. Come on, where's the jeans? We got those jeans up, man. I just find the great irony about what I do is I'm searching for something that the people who were wearing that something, they were searching for their treasure. Needless to say, 150 years later, here comes this crazy guy searching for the treasure they were wearing on them while they were searching for their treasure. Can you imagine how they must get a kick out of that when they're up there looking down or something and going, look at this freaking maniac out here looking for old clothing. We threw that crap away while we were looking for gold, you know? That's an artifact right there. Let's get the hell out of here. All right, well, we've seen some stuff here. All right, I'm completely freaking wiped out. I believe I just achieved a first descent, which is what I've told you I've looked for, where it's like I'm the first one that's been down there since the miners left. 
So now it's hat time and miller time. So I've got a few treasures here. That's a really old dynamite box right there. That's probably like 1895 or something like that. This is an old uh, sack. Oh, there's a piece of an old shirt. There's a Levi pocket. This is like a turn of the century Levi pocket with candle wax on it. That's the candle wax that dates it kind of and it's exposed rivets. It's hard to tell the era, but I would say anywhere from 1905 to 1920. That's a 1915 Levi item right there. So this is what you call a, a shield shirt. So this is something that us clothing geeks are really gonna think is the greatest, you know? I think things wanna be found. The cream rises to the top. So many times I go in a mine or I go in an old building or even a thrift store and something's like right on the surface and you're like, you just go into a shock. Like literally it's like a shock. I'm like, and I just think it's because the stuff wants to be found. I, I can't describe it. If it's karma or it's an energy or it's kinetic or I want it, so therefore it's there. I've done something good in my life. I don't know. I mean, I, I know there's a, a theory called universal law. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but universal law is, is just yin yang and this kind of karma stuff. I'll have to say it exists, man. I would, I would, I would bet on it actually. Thanks for watching. Click above to see more of our Vegas coverage.